Summer's folly had ripened into early autumn wisdom. Cucumbers had long succumbed to disease and death, with the exception of the Bolivian cucumber, the achocha. The garden clothed in polka-dotted zinnia cloth was being taken over by a rambling vine embroidering itself into the fabric of foliage and flower. It had knit itself a fort using the towering stalks of Jerusalem artichokes as scaffolding. This blanket, crowned with yellow flowers, hid inside its cloister a treasure of achocha pods, inconspicuous from the outside. Harvest was said to be an exploration. Achocha is a strong, disease-resistant vine that thrives in the cooling months of autumn. While I had shown you a bit of the harvest in a previous video, that was just a start. This is a prolific vine, and as I went about digging for pods, I was thinking of recipes I could create with it. I had tried the stuffed traditional concept and realized that while it is called a Bolivian cucumber, to me it is more like a squash. From the looks of it, I was sure to get a large, continuous harvest right until frost, so I had to start inventing recipes fast. There aren't that many online, so I got back into the kitchen with a bowl of achocha pods and my mind set on inventing a quiche recipe, or perhaps a tart to be more accurate. I began by making the crust, not your usual crust. I measured about a quarter cup of coconut oil into a plate and placed the plate into the freezer. This is an important step to make the crust more flaky. I had cooked about a cup of the smaller, darker garbanzo beans until they could be crushed when pinched. This type of garbanzo beans can be bought in an Indian or Middle Eastern store. Be careful not to overcook them for this recipe. I harvested a leek from the garden and cut the newer, green leafy tops to use in a crust, reserving the stock for the filling. I carefully washed the leaves to remove all the sand and dirt and cut them into smaller pieces to fit into the food processor. I added a pinch of salt to taste and some cracked pepper. Then I added about two tablespoons of tahini sauce and blended the mixture into a paste. To bind the mixture together, I added teff flour, one quarter cup at a time, pulsing the mixture as little as possible. Teff is an ancient Ethiopian grain that is gluten-free, and it is the basis of traditional injera bread. I added just about enough flour to get the mixture dry and flaky. There isn't an exact measurement, as this depends on the moisture already in the recipe. I proceeded then to put the mixture in the freezer while I made the filling. I also oiled a shallow tart pan and put it into the freezer to cool. You want pastries to be very cold when you put them into the hot oven to ensure crispness. I then went about cleaning the older achocha pods that had mature seeds by scraping them out and chopping the pod into smaller pieces. Younger pods would have soft seeds and would be easier to process, so this is a good recipe to use newer pods. I had waited a bit to harvest them and had too many mature pods hanging in the vine, so I used what I had at hand. I was also making up this recipe as I went along, so while I had done pastries in the past, I had not attempted anything like this before, much less using garbanzo beans, but I was hopeful this would be a good one. After chopping the pods into small pieces, I removed the coconut oil from the freezer and broke it up into chunks using a knife. Doing so will ensure that the oil is evenly incorporated into the dough. 
I got the cold dough from the freezer and dropped the frozen coconut oil pieces into the processor, pulsing the mixture until I had a grainy texture with a few larger oil pieces. Do not over blend it or let it heat up. You must work fast in this step. I compressed the mixture into the tar pan using a spoon to shape out a central cavity, leaving a pastry wall of about a half inch or so. Gatos e cães enlatados latem na lama entolados Lavem os filtros de barro, o filtro que está enlatado Um carro no topo da laje e um tsunami I put the form pastry shell into the freezer while I finish the filling. I drop the achocha pods into a skillet and saute them with a bit of olive oil. I got that leek stock I had reserved and sliced it thinly using a sharp knife. The thinner you do this, the better it will be. I added this into the sautéing achocha, mixing it well to incorporate the flavors. I then got about a cup of frozen corn and put it into the mixture, salting it to taste. Two to three tablespoons of tahini sauce would give this recipe creaminess, so I incorporated it into the dish. Into about a cup of water, I diluted a heaping tablespoon of cornstarch to add body to the filling and help it set when baked. I poured the dissolved cornstarch into the pan and stirred it with the heat off. You do not want to have the filling set before it is in the oven, so make sure to have the heat off. You can taste it and adjust salt if you wish. I then got the frozen pastry shell out of the freezer and filled it with the sautéed achocha mix, spreading it around evenly. I could see that this recipe was working well. I put it into a preheated medium-high oven and let it bake until golden brown. It looked appetizing, I just had to confirm it by tasting it. The 
gluten-free crust was flavorful and flaky. The filling was creamy and delicious. I have to say, this is the most delicious way of eating a chocha. If you decide to grill this exotic veggie, you may want to try this out.